Hey friends, welcome back. This is Tin Man Lee, photographer based in Los Angeles. So quick pause. I'm super honored to be invited as judge for this year's Nature Photographer of the Year Award photo contest. So it's an international photo contest and definitely check it out. So if you have seen the Canon rumors, you should know that the highly anticipated Canon R3 may only have 24 megapixels. I hope this is not true. So in this video, I'm going to share with you why megapixel is really important, even if this is a high speed, low light camera. And also I'm going to talk a little bit about the eye focus and also my experience with the R5 and the Sony A1. So if you are thinking about waiting for the ALF 3 or hold on to getting the ALF 5 or even switching to the Sony A1. This is a video you must check out. So guess what? My good friend Don just texted me yesterday morning uh, about the news from Canon Rumor. They, they, they said that they have confirmed from the camera's info that the ALF 3 is just going to be 24 megapixel. I hope it's not true because megapixel is really important. And it is one of the reasons why I have been updating my cameras. Let me share with you. To give you an idea of 25 megapixel versus 50 megapixel, this is a full frame photo of a 24 megapixel camera. I think it's a 1DX Mark II. If you zoom in 100%, it's this big. Now I'm going to show you a 50 megapixel camera of something that is similar in size. And this one is a 50 megapixel Sony A1. This is the full frame. And if you click on to 100% zoom, it's uh, this big. So that is the difference. So a few years ago, I went to Hawaii with my friends to photograph the lava. So in the trip, uh, my friend uh, Carl was in it and he just sold all his Canon gear for the Nikon D810, uh, which had about 45 megapixels. I was quite surprised because I didn't take a lot of landscape photos before. Almost none of the people in the group used Canon. They were all using either Nikon or uh, one of one of the guys, uh, Arby. He was using the uh, Phase 1 medium format camera, which has 100 megapixels. At first, I thought this was overkill and I said like, Pixels didn't really matter, I guess. Anyway, so we went out to take some photos, got back to the hotel and everybody sent in their photos into a laptop and then we just look at our photos. And that was really the first time I saw the photo coming out from a 100 megapixel camera. And then I thought, oh, maybe it's just a face one, it's just a medium format camera. But then my friend Carl and uh, Rick who both have the Nikon camera and their photos, their files, also were really sharp and also had that three-dimensional feel that I had never seen in my own photos. So that was the first experience on uh, Megapixel. And then a few years later, one of my photos was in the exhibit by Nature's Best in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. So my photo was printed at about five feet tall. Uh, it was from, from the file of a 1DX Mark II. And since I didn't crop, so the print looks okay, but when I walk around the exhibit, there were two or three photos that really stood out in terms of the print quality. One of them was from a friend, Steve Matthews. He won the Audubon Grand Prize. And that photo was from a Nikon DA50, 45 megapixel. And uh, most of the other photos were taken by camera with a lot less megapixels. And you could see that the quality had huge difference. So the, the main reason, uh, I actually did some research on that. For, for most of the printers, the standard is something called 300 dpi. What it really means is that for each inch, uh, they want to have at least 300 dots from the printer. So each dot represent probably one pixel. So they would prefer that you, you have uh, 300 pixels per inch. If you have to print a 30 inch print, um, then you will need 9,000 pixels. Then you said, like, but my camera didn't even have that many pixels. Then you have to do enlargement and don't want to do a lot of enlargement. Even though these days the Topax gigapixels and the Photoshop all have really nice um, image enlargement software, but they are really feeding the, the file with uh, pixels that they estimate is not real. And you, you may say, hey man, I, I never even need to make that big a print. I guess what? A few days ago, I was reached by a company that want to buy the licensing fee of one of my photos and they offered 
over 8,000 US dollars. So, so pixels is really important. The more, the better. So I had no idea why Canon would make the R3 with lower pixels. And again, I hope that this is not true. This is just something that wrong info uh, because that would be a disaster for Canon uh, to compete with Sony. And I'm not talking about you know, Nikon. So anyways, let's talk about um, iFocus. Uh, the reason I want to talk about it is because I think uh, the future of camera, the future of photography really depends on which camera manufacturer has a better iFocus algorithm. And that's it. So what, what really is this iFocus? It's based on a technology called deep learning. Uh, it's one of the topics in artificial intelligence. So the idea is that they give the computer millions of images. For example, they have images of cats and they have images, they have millions of images of cats and they have millions of images of dogs. And then they have people actually uh, annotated, meaning that they would draw uh, the eyes, highlight where the eyes are for the cats and dogs for each of these millions of images. And then they would tell the computer, okay, use all your computing power to learn what are the distinctive features to tell the location of the eyes of the cats versus the dogs or any other species of the animals. And uh, all these millions of images um, may have different lighting condition, different resolution, the color, the shapes, the sizes of all, all these animals are all different. So with these millions of, they call the training samples, uh, after the computer learn about uh, these subtleties, when you present the computer with a new image, they would instantly identify where the location of the eyes are. So a few years ago, uh, there was an experiment done by a group of scientists in Stanford. So what they did is that they take a bunch of images of uh, patients who have um, skin cancer or just using cell phone to take a photo uh, on their skin. They use machine learning, they use this deep learning to train the computer. And then they have a, a panel of really experienced dermatologists to compete basically with, uh, with the machine and to tell whether the lesion on the skin is benign or malignant. And because of deep learning, the machine actually beats the human. And so, iFocus is going to be the future of photography. And because iFocus can only be used with a camera with electronic viewfinder, meaning that mirrorless or the uh, micro four third, uh, those cameras have the electronic viewfinder, not the digital SLR because they have to have the mirror to like reflex. So basically you can have the EVF on, on those cameras. So that is iFocus. And, uh, I was looking at the specs of the official uh, announcement in the Canon website. They adding one extra features on iFocus, which is the eye control iFocus. When I first saw this, I remember that back in the days when in the film cameras for Canon, they actually mentioned about this technology, like the Elon 7 or the EOS 3, or I forgot which model. Back in the days, they have the eye control autofocus, but I guess at the time, the technology has not caught up with the idea. But right now, the computer finally had caught up. So with this new technology of eye guidance, basically wherever your eyeball is looking at, uh, the camera will use that as an assist to know where the eye focus algorithm should start to look for the eyes. So combining the two, that will be really, really powerful. And about the um, low light capability, minus AEV and stuff, th those are really, really nice to have. But to me right now, I used to be really focused on how much low light the cameras are. But after using a lot of the uh, big aperture lenses, meaning the 402.8 lenses, these lenses have big aperture to receive a lot of light. Basically, I can use this kind of lens to, to get more light, so the, uh, to, to help the, the low light condition. So I would rather have a lens that can acquire a lot of light and a lot of megapixels, the more the better. So that is my, my feeling about the Canon R3. Hopefully it will, it will have high megapixel because this is really important. Right now, a lot of the cameras and lenses are out of stock everywhere as you see the manufacturing. So I, I would say that if you 
still can get a hold of the R5, just just get it and enjoy it because uh, there may be a chance that the R3 only have 24 megapixels. I hope not. Even 30 is, is going to be bad. But, uh, but well, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you next time. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave your comments below and I'll try to get back to you.